You know, we're, for the next several Sabbaths, we're going to be on a journey looking at Paul's prison letters. We're going to be looking at Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, and Philemon, all at one time. It's going to be the next several Sabbaths. And today we're going to start with the book of Ephesians. And this book is packed full of great stuff that God has for us. You know, Paul wrote this while he was in prison in Rome. And Acts 19, when you get home today, read the, read the book of Acts chapter 19. It tells you why Paul wrote what he wrote to Ephesians. Today we're going to look at Ephesians 1, 3 through 14. And in this you're going to see the phrase over and over again in different ways. It's going to be in Christ, in Him, or God has chosen us. Interesting. Interesting that when it comes to salvation, when it comes to redemption, when it comes to forgiveness, it's all about Him and not about us. So as we begin this new series, Paul's Prison Letters, or Letters from Prison, Let's bow our heads and pray as we dig right in to Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 through 14. Let's bow our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful to be here this morning. And just like we have been reminded with the song, you are good. You never let us down. You are the king of our hearts. And we come here to praise your holy name. We come here, God, to open your precious word that we are privileged to have and may we never take it for granted. We pray for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon this place right now, God. We pray that the mighty angels will come and protect this place and keep the devil at bay, Lord, for he wants to distract us. But we know that you are a refuge in our strong tower. We know that you are our mighty God who has called us to be here to listen to you, to come and open your word and study it. And Father, I just pray as your chosen person for this time, God, anoint my lips. Put your words in my mouth. Don't let any of Jeff get in the way of this. But your will be done. Your name be honored and glorified. Let our hearts burn within us as you speak, God. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You know, Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 through 14 is where we're going to be at today. And what's interesting is this. In the Greek, when you read these 12 verses, it has no period. It has no break whatsoever. It is one long sentence. It is as though, it is as though the Holy Spirit said, Paul, we're not going to stop writing because this is great stuff for God's people. That's why it has been called by scholars, Paul's hymn of thanksgiving and praise. And as we read it together, you will, you will understand why. And what's interesting too, as most of you probably know, he is writing this to Gentile people whom the Jews counted on the outside. That they were not part of the family of God. And Paul, as you will see as we read these verses, he says, you are part of the family of God. When you accept Jesus Christ, you are adopted, you have been chosen, you have been saved, and you're part of the family. And isn't it wonderful, brothers and sisters, that we were all Gentiles. And we, as soon as we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we're part of the family. So let's open up our Bibles. I don't have the whole, all the verses on the screen. Let's open up our Bibles. To Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 
1. Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. And we're going to begin in verse 3. Look how he starts this verse, or this, this, these, these verses here. He says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, just as He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before Him in love having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to Himself, according to the good pleasure of His will, to the praise of the glory of His grace, by which He made us accepted in the Beloved. In Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His grace, which He made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence having made known to us the mystery of His will, according to His good pleasure, which He purposed in Himself. That in the dispensation of the fullness of the times He might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, in Him. Now listen. In Him also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of Him who works all things, according to the counsel of His will, that we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of His glory. In Him you also trusted, after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of His glory. What verses, right? Over and over again, what we hear is it's in Him. It's in Christ. He chose us. We are adopted. And brothers and sisters, we should all say, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Yes. How can you not read those verses and not say that? Yes. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. When you read it, it's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus and all you can say, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. James says the same thing. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. Coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. What? Blessed be the God and Father. Thank God for Jesus, the good gift and the perfect gift, who came from above. So let's look at this. Ephesians chapter 1. Verses 4 through 6. The Bible says, Even as He chose us in Him. You hear that? As He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before Him. In love He predestined us for adoption as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of His will to the praise of His glorious grace with which He has blessed us in the Beloved. You'll notice in these verses that continually it says, in Him, in Him, in Him, His will, in the Beloved. That is because it's all about God and not us when it comes to salvation, when it comes to adoption. It's all about Him. He chose us. He chose us. So many people, brothers and sisters, can't believe that. That He would choose a wretch like me. Would He really choose me, Pastor? You better believe He will. You better believe He will choose you. He already has. Brothers and sisters, He wants 
wants you, and I'm going to use a sports jargon, He wants you to be on His team. Why? Because He wants everyone to win. Amen. And when you're on God's team, you are a winner. You're a winner. When I read the Bible, the book of Revelation says, we win because of Jesus. Because of what He has done for us. He chose you. He will choose you. But pastor, are you sure? I mean, I've got so many problems in my life. He chose you. Pastor, I, you know, I, I, I'm trying to overcome an addiction. He chose you. Pastor, I, I, I lose my temper a lot. He chose you. Pastor, I, I'm in prison. He chose you. He chose you. Why? Because He wants you to be part of His family. He wants you to be His child. He wants you to have that abundant life that only He can be. You see, in love, He predestined us for adoption as children through Jesus Christ. You see, this word predestined, predestination, has been going, I mean, it's like, it's given to a teaching that God has already decided who will be saved and who will be lost, and there's nothing you can do about it. But brothers and sisters, let me say this here. That violates two teachings. One, you see, God's provision is for salvation, is for all who believe. Two, it violates the power of choice that we have, that God has given to us, that we choose whether we want to be saved or lost. You see, the question is, what does Paul mean by predestined? And here it is, that salvation and eternal life are predestined to be available to all as a free gift of God in Jesus Christ, but only to those who believe in Him shall be saved. Amen. You see, once we choose to be in Christ, Paul tells us that we are adopted as children of God. Listen to what John, oh, and then we can say, hey, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. Nope. There we go. John, as John 1, 12 to 13 says, listen, but as many as received him, to them, notice what it says, He gave the right. We didn't take it. We, we can't give it. He gives the right to become what? Children of God. To those who believe in His name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. When you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are adopted into the family of God. And you have all the same privileges as everyone else. So, brothers and sisters, when the church at Ephesus and here at Raleigh Seventh-day Adventist Church, even though we are Gentiles, guess what? We are part of the family of God and the inheritance is ours. Eternal life is ours. Every promise in this book is ours because our citizenship is in heaven. We are part of God's family. And all we can say is, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Yeah. All you have to do is come and bring your life to Him no matter what you have done, your addictions, your anger. God doesn't care. He wants you and let Him do the fixing. He can help you. He'll look at you and say, neither do I condemn you. But go and sin no more. Rise, take up your bed, and you walk. You're now part of my family. Hey, I mean, look. He took a group of fishermen and made them part of his family. He made a tax collector part of his family. He made an adulterous woman part of his family. And he took a wretch like me. And I'm not going to spill my garbage here. But he took a wretch like me. And I'm part of his family. Yeah. Yeah. 
and he'll take a wretch like you and make the heart of his family. Ephesians 1, 7 through 8, as we go on. He says, in him. Don't you love how that starts? Yeah. In him. Yeah. We have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. I love that word, lavished. On us with all wisdom and understanding. Notice first and foremost what the Bible says here. Notice what it says. It's in Him. It's Jesus that we have redemption and forgiveness. It's in Christ only that forgiveness comes, that redemption happens. We can't earn any of it on our own good works. We can't earn any of it on our own good works. It doesn't matter how many times you read this Bible. You can't earn forgiveness because you continue to read the Bible. It doesn't matter how many Sabbaths you keep from sunset Friday to sunset Saturday. That doesn't earn you forgiveness. It doesn't matter how you eat. Whether you eat clean meat, you're a vegetarian, you're vegan. doesn't matter. That doesn't earn you forgiveness. Because none of that stuff died for you. Jesus did it. And it's in Him that we have forgiveness of sins. And then once we have Jesus in our life and we're part of God's family, we'll want to read the Bible. We'll want to keep the Sabbath because we love Him. Because we're part of His family and we want to walk like Jesus walked. You see, it cost Jesus His life. That's why the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Mark 10, 45, the Bible says He gave His life as a ransom for many. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 18, listen to this. You are not ransomed with perishable things uh, as, such as uh, silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Christ. In other words, we cannot deliver ourselves it took Jesus to come from above and come to save us. That's right. Because it's whoa, that's right. because it's in Him that we have forgiveness. It took His life to bring us forgiveness of sins. And brothers and sisters, no matter what, what path you're walking on, no matter what you are doing, when you get on your knees and you say, Jesus, forgive me, He will do it. When I read these verses, the one thing that comes to my mind as an illustration is this. Is that you remember those Chilean miners um, some time ago, they got stuck in the mines? You remember that? They couldn't save themselves. There was nothing they could do to save themselves. What did it take? It took someone from above to come and save them. And they were rescued. Brothers and sisters, there was nothing we can do to save ourselves. Nothing. Nothing. It took someone from above to come and rescue us and to save us. And Jesus said, hey, I'll go. He came down from above and walked as a man. And walked as a man and died for our sins. Rose again on the third day, and now it had a mediating in our behalf. I love this quote, and I don't remember where I got the quote from. I wrote it down and didn't even write down the reference. So forgive me, but I know you've heard it before. And this is what it says. It says, Christ was treated as we deserve, that we might be treated as he deserves. He was condemned for our sins in which he had no share, that we might be justified by his righteousness in which he had no share. He suffered the death which was ours, that we might receive the life which was His. By His stripes, we are healed. We are redeemed. We are forgiven. We are lavished, as the Bible says, with God's grace. Grace is crucial. We are saved, as Ephesians chapter 2 says, we are saved by grace, not by works, so that we can't boast and say, we did it. No. It's God's grace and we can say, He did it. He did it. Grace. You know what grace means? Here's another, here's a little another acronym, Kizzy, that you like. Listen to this. Grace. God's riches at Christ's expense. 
It took Jesus for our forgiveness. And no matter what you've done in your life, no matter where you are, the moment you say to Jesus, please forgive me, he forgives and you're adopted into his family. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. He made known to us the mystery of his will, according, listen, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ to be put into effect when the times reach their fulfillment to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. You hear that, brothers and sisters? He made known to us the mystery of His will. And what is His will? Unity. Unity. He came to bring reconciliation to a relationship that was broken between us and God. So that we can be reconciled to Him. He came to bring reconciliation between Jew and Gentile so we all can be part of God's family. He came that, that the church would have unity. And everything, brothers and sisters, will eventually have unity between heaven and earth on the day Christ comes. Everything will be unified on the day. Jesus comes. And all we can say is Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. You know, when I think about that, it's just like, Lord, it's all about you. What a great gift to be adopted into God's family. To have redemption by Jesus Christ. To be part of God's family. Saved by grace that we don't deserve. But He gives it anyway. And no matter who we are. No matter what status we fall in. Rich or poor. Black or white. No matter the house we have, the car we drive, God chose us to be part of His family. Amen. Because He looks deeper than we do. We look on the outside, God looks on the inside. And I can't wait for the day when, when, when unity comes. You know, and I think too, I'm going to use what I call my sanctified imagination. I think this is one thing we're going to be saying when Jesus comes. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Think about it, brothers and sisters. As verse 13 and 14 say there, look, the moment that we accept Jesus Christ, it says, in Him we're sealed with the promise of the Holy Spirit. In other words, we belong to Him. You see, a seal is a sign of ownership, right? Ranchers put a seal on their cattle to show that who the cattle belongs to. Likewise, God Himself seals us with the Holy Spirit and it says, we belong to Him. We're His. And brothers and sisters, once, once we have the seal of heaven upon us, guess what? It says, in Him, in Christ. Guess what? Verse 11. We have obtained an inheritance. An inheritance. It's because of in Christ, of our being adopted into the family of God, us being redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, we have an inheritance. I love this. I love this. Galatians 3.29. It says, and if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's descendants or Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Which means you get an inheritance. First Peter chapter 1, verse 14 says, or verse 4 says this, to an inheritance that is imperishable, 
undefiled, unfading, kept in heaven for who? Who? For you. You, me, who by God's power being guarded through faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. So what is this inheritance that we can have? Eternal life is an inheritance. Heaven is an inheritance. The new heaven and the new earth is an inheritance. All this are for those who are in Christ, who has been redeemed and forgiven by Jesus Christ. Alright, let me try that one more time. Because <laughs> you know, brothers and sisters, I mean, to me, I get excited when I read this stuff. I mean, it's just like, hey, wait. Listen, eternal life is an inheritance. Heaven is an inheritance. The new heaven and the new earth is an inheritance. And all this is for you who are in Christ, who has been redeemed and forgiven by Jesus Christ, who are adopted into God's family. You get all the privileges. Hey, you get to walk the streets of gold. You get to see the mansion that Jesus has built for us. You get to see the new heaven and the new earth when we come down after a thousand years. And we, you know, and we get to a... It's, it's going to be an inheritance. Let me tell you this. It's going to be an inheritance on the first Sabbath when Jesus stands up and says, i got a sermon for you. And I'm going to be like, go ahead. I, I can't wait. I can't wait. Because I'll tell you this, the first person I want to see is Jesus. And the second person I want to see is my wife. Oh. Good. And, then, and I want to see my son and my daughter and, and my son-in-law, my grandson and my granddaughter about to come. And, and if my son gets married, I want to see his wife and their kids. And then I want to see you all in heaven. Because, I, because what I want to do is I want to make a little area a little area and say, okay, Raleigh, Amen. come on over. And Jesus, you come and speak for us. Hey, what an inheritance that's going to be. Let me go back. There we go. What does it say there? He says, you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Listen, who is the guarantee of our inheritance? Who is the guarantee? You know what a guarantee is? A guarantee is earnest money. A guarantee is earnest money. It's part of the purchase money given in advance as security for the rest. Kind of like when you buy a house. You put down earnest money or guarantee money that the rest is going to come. That's why I think Jesus, when I read this, I was like, ah, could that be why Jesus says, hey, it's to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Holy Spirit will not come. The Holy Spirit is a guarantee that, hey, eternal life is coming. Heaven is coming. The new heaven and the new earth is coming. Your inheritance is coming. And how can we not say, let me get to where I want to be. How can we not say, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. When you read these verses, Ephesians 1, 3-14, through 14, brothers and sisters, how can you not say, Blessed be the God and Father. I surrender all. I see what it costs you. It cost all heaven for this to happen for us. For us to be adopted. For us to be forgiven. For us to have an inheritance. It cost Jesus. It cost 
Jesus his life. Why? Because he wants you and he wants me to be saved. He wants us to have the best life ever. He wants us to have the abundant life. For you see, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus says, I come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. Yes, right. yes. So here's the question. Do you belong to Jesus? Yes. Yes. Have you been redeemed yes. by the blood of the Lamb? Yes. Have you been forgiven? Are you part of God's family? Yes. Are you going to receive the inheritance that never fades away? Yes. Because you see, brothers and sisters, let me get to it. Let me get to it. As many as received Him. You see, that many is you and me. That many is you and me. To them, He gave the right to become Children, sons and daughters of God. As many as received Him. As many as received Him. I want to know if you received Jesus today. Maybe you have. Maybe you haven't. I don't know where you are. But all I know is Jesus says, come to me. All you who labor and are heavy laden. And he says, I will give you rest. Yeah. Are you part of his family? We're going to sing our, our last song. And you have the words on the screen, right? Okay, you can do the words. What we're going to do is we're going to sing our last song, Good, Good Father. Which we just read, he is a good, good father. Amen. And if you have never accepted Jesus in your life, I want to give you the opportunity right now because I want you to be part of God's family, have the inheritance that He gives. So as we sing our closing song, Good, Good Father, as we sing these words, if you have never accepted Jesus in your life, I want you to join me right here as we sing this song. And we're going to sing a little bit, and then I'm going to make another appeal as well. So.
never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. We're going to continue playing and continue singing. Please come down. The people will move out of your way. If you want to come and accept Jesus and be adopted in His family, or maybe you're one who was like me at one time. You left. You left the church. You left Jesus. And you're here today, and you want to become part of God's family once again. Brothers and sisters, when you do, He will accept you just as you are, but He's too good to leave us just as we are. And so as we continue singing and continue playing, come down, move the person out of the way, come to the altar, and become part of God's great family. So we're going to continue singing. Come down if you want to be part of God's family.